Kia ora koutou. Hello everyone. Welcome to episode 43 of Only a Podcast. Say hello, Captain. Hello, Captain. Bye. Um, yeah. Kia ora whanau. Uh, yeah, everything's fine. Um, what have we got today? We've got a sort of giant grab bag of all sorts of things. All sorts of nonsense, yeah. <laughs> no particular theme. Yeah. Uh, books, TV, uh, what else? Oh, then I'm never, I'm just get on with it. Let's get yeah. on with it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Go on. I've been to Give dentist us. this week. Been to, oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, is that a second mortgage taken out? <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, I'm just looking at remortgaging options. Uh, my teeth yeah. are good. I go every year and I'm, I'm good. I always floss cool. and all that. So I never need any dental work. But this time, like, I haven't had dent, proper dental work for probably more than 10 years. But this time, yeah. I just got a little nagging, a little ache in my lower right hand side. So I thought, no. mm. And yeah, sure enough, there's a crack in one of me, one of me Hempsteads. So uh, yeah, got to go back and get that fixed. So I mm. don't know, but yeah, God, dental dental care over here is so expensive. Oh my God. It is, it is crazy. Oh. Um, yeah. It's, uh, a visit can be 250 without even, you know. Oh, check, my, my checkup's 190, just a checkup. Yeah, a yeah. checkup yeah. and a clean, 250 That'd be £40 pounds. Pounds in the UK, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Mm. Um, anything more? Mm. Fill, if you're into fillings, it's it's off into hundreds of thousands, isn't it? Uh, I've, yeah. I didn't ask. I haven't asked what it's going to cost, but I'm expecting oh. uh, it's just take an old filling out, put a new one in. That's basically what it's got to do to to support this crack. But I don't yeah, know. Five hundred dollars. <laughs> well, I was thinking it's going to be five or six hundred dollars. I don't know. An hour's work. Yeah. I don't know. No, no sure. idea. Uh, he said, "Do you want a crown or a filling?" <laughs> I was like, well, I could go to the Tower of London and get a cheaper crown than, uh, yeah, than you're going to give me, mate. So, uh, yes, yeah, so just a feeling. So there you go. It's all right. Yeah, we must have complained. We must have complained about some things like that, like the doctors, because you know everybody goes, "Oh, you have to pay to go to the doctors, don't you?" Yeah. Oh, uh, we say, yeah, we do, but we generally get an appointment when we phone up. <laughs> yeah, and we don't pay national insurance. Pretty really quick. So and we don't pay that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, we don't pay nearly as much, don't pay nearly as much tax. Yes. So, yeah, that's right. But, yeah, uh, well, insurance is the answer, I suppose, isn't it? But there you go. Never mind that. Never mind all that. Uh, and, uh, oh, yeah, deodorant. So, um, deodorant. deodorant. Have you noticed recently the big, what's the big leading marketing selling point of deodorant these days? I'll, te I'll tell you, shall I? No. 70, right. 72 hour protection. Okay. So, oh, it's emblazoned. Well, all over, front and centre on the bottle. Who needs that? It's not gonna, it's, and it's yeah. not going to happen anyway, is it? <laughs> no, but who, yeah, who are the is people it? that need, no. that don't wash for three days, basically? Seven. Who are yeah, those people? Mm -hmm. And what kind of marketing strategy is it that's basically saying you can use less of our product? Don't get it. Mm. Don't get that. Mm. Used, to, used to be 24-hour protection, didn't it? Sure, right guard, all that stuff, 24-hour protection. Yeah. but I don't know. Anyway, it's, just, I, it's, don't, don't matter, don't matter. Just caught my eye marketing, this week. Marketers. Marketing. I, 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 said to, I said to my daughter, if you ever bring any home, anybody home who's into marketing as a, as a significant other, then I shall remorselessly take the piss out of them all the time. But I, think, I think it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's the, best, the greatest invention of the 20th century, wasn't it, marketing? Mm. Um, I, one day we'll do a deep dive on uh, products that are aimed at women that are that they bamboozle them with science, you know. Science, yeah. Uh, you know, ultra uh, hydroactive liposome things, yes. you know, all this nonsense. Uh, yeah, we'll do a deep dive on that one day because there's, there's there's value in that. So anyway, yeah, yeah some that's something that just caught me eye the other day, deodorant. Cool. Yeah, what, what you got? Yeah, I, what have I got? Well, let's move on to sort of cultural things rather than rants, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I have an announcement. I have, I don't know. I have an announcement. That I spotted the other day that it is the 40th anniversary, 40, um, of one of the greatest concert films of all time, if, if not the greatest, that's uh, Talking Heads, uh, Stop Making Sense. Brilliant. Which I did see when it came out, and many times subsequently, although not very recently, mm. as I had a VHS tape, I think, in mm. the old days that I purchased with said film. Um, a great album especially in lots of extended versions you can get these days. And they are re-releasing said film in September. Um, 
I don't know whether we'll get it in an IMAX, if, we, if you've got an IMAX, of course, but it's out in regular theatres also after that. So um, mm. if you've never seen Talking Heads Stop Making Sense and you fancy a good gig film, then go and see that. I think I found it on one of the streaming platforms not so long ago. That's possibly there. I think yeah, I did, yeah. There. I think this is all remastered and all that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, oh, great stuff. on a big screen with super sound and all that yeah. kind of thing. Mm. Brilliant. That's great. I was pleased to see that. Good, good stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, what else? What else have I got? Uh, TV. I think we can move into TV. You've got some TV comments about an old series. Um, just a brief comment. I've started to watch um, a comedy slash drama series called Far North on TV3, mm -hmm. um, starring Robert, Robin Malcolm, who used to be in Outrageous Fortune over here, which is a series that ran for many, many seasons. Mm -hmm. And Tim Ware Morrison, who most recently has been in the book of Boba Fett and The Mandalorian. Yeah. Uh, he's been in loads of things. Once for Warriors originally, he was the main mm -hmm. character. Uh, and it's about a sort of semi- well, it is about a real life thing that happened uh, when some nefarious far north has decided to help some Asians uh, import drugs into New Zealand. And it was a real life comedy of errors. Um, they got a boat, but they didn't know how to drive it. Um, the offshore boat um, never really made it. And uh, all sorts of things went wrong with um, with the crims up there. Mm. Uh, and a bit like the... Uh, um, uh, a bit like the Greenpeace Rainbow Warrior uh, thing. It doesn't take much for, for nefarious things going on to stand out in a, mm. in a sort of small town up there. You yeah. know, if something's just a bit different, everybody notices. And yeah. uh, indeed, that did happen in this particular thing. Uh, we're about two episodes in, and it's pretty cool. There's another three to go, I think. Right. So we start to watch that so New Zealanders can. Yeah, have I a just crack caught that. I just caught, uh, I didn't catch the beginning, but I caught an interview on, on the radio with, I guess it must have been the director of that. I don't know who it was. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know what they were talking about. Um, but I, I was like, oh, that yeah. sounds interesting. But I didn't know what it was. But now you've said that, I know what they were talking about now. So, um, yeah, yeah oh, I'll give that a go. I know yesterday there was still somebody in the courts trying to, uh, one of John Olomu's distant relations, I think, is trying to, trying to reduce the sentence or swerve a bit of punishment. And, um, right. Uh, no, it didn't happen. No. Uh, so it's uh, that's still still going on up until yesterday, I think. Right. Yeah. But cool. Oh. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish that one. It looks it, it, it looks it looks great. Good. Good stuff. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Um, you talked about talking heads, and uh, whenever we we're going to do one of these episodes, I before we even record it, I'm starting to think about what the title is going to be, just knowing what's on the, uh, yeah, I know, it's the, what's on the agenda. It is the hardest <laughs> bit, but you've, you've, you've talked about talking heads and I'm about to talk about the young ones. Okay. So I think I've got a title because we've got the young ones once in every lifetime. Then you've got talking heads once in a lifetime. So I reckon we can make a title out of that somehow. Okay. Um, anyway, that's by the way, right. as admin, admin. Yeah. So um, the young ones. So, for those that don't know, it was a TV sitcom, a British TV sitcom in I think 81. It was first on thereabouts. Yeah. Uh, and it was um, uh, the, at the time alternative comedy was just starting to happen. And it was this crazy anarchic uh, sitcom about these four students who lived in this student house. Uh, there was a, a, a punk, there was a hippie, there was a political activist and there was a, uh, I don't know what he was, Mike, the cool person. He was a, yeah, but he paid for his, you can, you, yeah. he paid for his older. degree. Yeah. And he was much older yeah. than them. And it, yeah. But it was uh, at, at the time that came along, I was kind of 12, 13 years old. And I've, I've said it on this, on a previous episode, how it sort of profoundly changed my life. Uh, I just switched me on to comedy really and it, yeah, it, a, a, yeah it must have been like being a boy of that age or a child of that age when monty python came on maybe maybe it had the same effect i don't know um mm. but yeah it had a it had a big effect on me i don't think i'd be the same person i am now without without that tv show it was at the time when v uh, vcrs had just come along so i i, yeah. I taped it and i just watched it just watched it yeah. watched it watched it you know so i do it word for word um but i hadn't watched it for a long time um and i found it's, it's on bbc iplayer now so i started watching them again 
and uh, yeah. uh, it's been years since I, since I watched it. And yeah, there's so much in there that I didn't get. So so much, so much. It was you know, um, it, it was adult stuff. You know, yeah. polit- political stuff, and you know, they're talking about Trotsky and Lenin, and yeah, you know, Rick's talking about those sort of. You know, and I have no idea what they're talking about. And uh, you know, when Neil's talking about Pink Floyd and Genesis, I had no idea what he was on about when I was that age. You yeah. know, um, so there's so much more in it that I'm getting now that I never got back then. It doesn't seem dated at all. Um, yeah. I saw this video the other day on YouTube. Just stumbled across it of this guy goes to filming locations. He was an American guy, but he was in the UK and he wanted to go to the house where the pilot, the first episode of season one of the young ones, the the house that got demolished in the first season, he wanted to go and find that. So he went and found it. It's, I think it's in North, uh, North London. It's in London somewhere. Um, and it looks quite different. It's all done up. looks nice now. Um, but the people that live there turned up in their car and went into the house. Um, and they had absolutely, they were huge young ones fans. But they had absolutely no idea that they were living in the house. Where, wow. <laughs> so that was quite funny. Um, but um, I'd heard ages ago, never thought about it much, that there was a hidden fifth housemate in The Young Ones. Have you ever heard this? I, strangely, I saw a photo on one of the socials the other yeah. day. It might have been, um, I might have retweeted something. I don't know. I might have seen the same one. But anyway, maybe look into it. Uh, a couple yeah. of weeks ago, this was. And sure enough, there's this fifth character, and on re- and, and this character appeared kind of in the background, hidden in the yeah, background. Never really, never said anything. No, never said or did anything. No. I just was sat there yeah. in the background for every episode in the first series. Um, right. Now I I, fa- I discovered this before I re- started rewatching it, and they're, they're there, and all the hundreds of times I've never. watched them, <laughs> never noticed them, and they're not even that yeah. well hidden. In no. some cases, they're right there. Right. I never noticed them. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a woman, very long hair over their face. Um, and just sitting there almost like in a meditating position sort of thing, just hidden in a corner somewhere in the, in the background yeah. of a scene. Um, uh, and it was a kind of a uh, bit of a joke that they did when they made the show apparently, but it was only in season one. Um, mm. but yeah, so I looked that up, the hidden fifth housemate of the young ones. Um, it's quite, quite funny that I, I'm watching it now. It's like, Oh my God. Yeah. It's there. How on earth did I not see that? But um, anyway. Um, it's, it's good that you still get something out of it because there's so many of those things you kind of revisit. Yeah. A case in point, Blackadder, which uh, certainly yeah. series is two and three. Yeah. Um, I watched. The Golden I Age, have right? watched endlessly. Yeah. Or, you know, I, I, yeah. I know I can't say that I remember every word because I don't mm. remember things that, that far away. Mm. But I watched one of series three last night uh, just uh night before last just mm. for something to have a look at yeah. just pop in pop into series three again mm. and it was just far too familiar and i got nothing extra out of it right. you know it was just like oh i've got to watch this again you don't get the same feeling do you you don't get the I, same I feeling. Haven't watched it, even though i haven't watched it for a long time yeah it's like well you mean the feeling's not there yeah and it's all you know it's it's great stuff but it just kind of washed over me a bit. Maybe so it's where, just, where you are in a point in time in your life as well. Yeah, yeah fairly sure. All yeah, that yeah. stuff, all that sort of subconscious stuff that goes on behind it. But yeah, yeah. like watching the young ones again is really, yeah, it's been quite, um, oh, what's yes. the word? Quite um, evocative. It like, takes, yeah. takes me back. And, and I've written a few things down here to this day. And what was that? 40 years ago, right? To this day, I still quote the young ones. In my head, mostly. I don't say it out loud because people think I was weird. But I've written some down. If anyone mentions a video, in my head, I go, oh, have we got a video? Right? If you don't remember yeah. the, or know the show, this won't mean anything to anyone. If ever I meet someone called Neil, instantly my brain goes, Neil, Neil, orange peel. <laughs> Young Ones fans will be laughing now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Summer Holiday by Cliff Richard. Right? <laughs> I, I see Suggs yeah. when Madness were in it. You and me, I'll smash your face in. Yeah. Um, if ever I get some mail, if I get a parcel in my head, I say a package from the Transvaal. How strange. Yeah. Uh, anyone here like the human league? Yeah. Another one I use all the time. Um, yeah. Bank manager, darling fascist bully boy. If ever someone mentions bank manager, it's absolutely ingrained in my head. I'm sure there's more. Um, quick, quick for you to eat the television. Yeah. Yeah. All that. Yeah. <laughs> Things like that. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So many of them. And, uh, yeah weird that so i wonder has anyone else got that stuff that was from their childhood that just won't that's associated with something it just won't 
won't go away. Yeah. You can't break the association, but yeah. yeah. So I've been enjoying that. I've, I've watched season one. I'm going to get into season two, uh, series two, sorry. Uh, yeah, over the next week and watch them all again. Brilliant stuff. I think a bit, another thing common with Blackadder, it developed, it got better, I yeah. think, yeah. as it went on. As oh, definitely, settled definitely. into it and started to pack yeah. more jokes into it. I mean, Blackadder won. Yeah. Had the misfortune for a comedy series of not being that funny mm. um, until they basically made every line a one liner mm. uh, throughout the series two and three, and then they were off. And so, punch lines uh, and recurring gags and all that. Yeah. Absolutely. All so h- here we go it. then. High water mark for you, Blackadder. Ooh. What's your high water Black mark? Adder. Best episode. <sighs> The one when I get drunk in, episode, in series two. A great booze up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it's poss- possibly that one. Lord yeah, Flashart. I'm going to go with that. Oh, well, Flashart, of course. Tom I, Baker. I, I, think I'll, I think I'll go with the drunk one. Yeah. There's so many. Potato, yeah. yeah. Uh, potato's good. Yeah. That, yeah, there's, there's several lines out of that one that you can, uh, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to go with the drunk one. Yeah. Miriam Margulies, wasn't it? Was it Miriam yes. Margulies? Yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Lord, yeah. Lord Melcher eats a lot of curry turtle and gets a hangover and <laughs> farts some flabby woof woofs come out of him. <laughs> yeah, just... A turnip shape exactly like a thingy. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, Brilliant stuff. Um, uh, oh. And one other thing. And then, um, right. then I'm done. Lotto tickets. So we we ended up Ooh. with a few scratch cards the other day. Long oh, yeah. story, but we had some scratch cards. So I'm scratching them off. And I don't feel I've ever had scratch cards in this country. But back home, you scratch the thing off. And if you match three symbols or whatever, you win the prize, you know. Um, so there's one that's based on a game of poker, right? And you scratch the things off. You have a, some cards and you scratch off the cards. And if you make a better hand than your opponent on the thing, you win, Right. So did that, and I said, like, "Oh, great! We've won. We've beaten the beaten the card. We've got a prize." Because so it was like three three aces or something. I got scratch off the prize, hundred thousand uh, dollars. What? What? Uh, what? No. Check that for me. Check that for someone. Check that for me. Yeah, hundred thousand dollars. Anyway, there's a little another little panel down the bottom. Scratch here to see if you've won. Uh, scratch that. Match any of these two numbers on this panel anywhere else on the card, and you've won. Okay. So you win, right? Hundred thousand yeah. dollars. That's nice. Then you read on the back. Take it to your local lotto retailer to see to see if you've won. So even if you've won, you don't know if you've won. Anyway, we won. Yeah. Four dollars. Okay. Right. Four, four dollars. I don't so know. Don't, don't know how they work that out. So it's you don't a even share of. I don't the know. Prize I think they have. A, I think they have a use by date on them. Oh, okay. Uh, and if you if you haven't claimed it by the I don't know. I can't. It's so complicated. But for all intents and purposes, I was pretty sure we'd won a hundred grand. Uh, Good. And we had we won four, which is somewhere short of a hundred thousand. Yes. Because I needed that for my filling. <laughs> Well, yeah, you will do. Yeah, I'll have to start yeah. keeping my deodorant on for seventy-two hours now. Uh, oh, that, that, that's called a callback in comedy. That was good, wasn't it? Um, yeah. So um, that's everything on my list. I don't want to keep it's the people too long. You got everything else? Anything else on your list? Yeah, I've got a couple of things. Um, yeah, go I know that. Um, I know that we often mention. We often mention the Beatles. Yes. And we often through the course of often mentioning the Beatles, we often mention Revolution in the Head. We do. Which is the Ian MacDonald book, which goes through all the Beatles tracks in chronological order and describes their genesis and um, where they fit in the canon and the history of the Beatles. <sighs> and there are some other books that are quite similar. And I picked one up the other day because I started to, well, start, I read for the second time Johnny Marr's Biography, autobiography, no less. Mm. Um, the Smiths, and I realised that I have this, which is oh. Time and Goddard's um, oh. yeah. songs that saved your life. The art of the Smiths, which is in Ian Macdonald fashion, goes through 
the songs of the Smiths, one ah, by okay. one in chronological order, right. and describes their creation, Genesis, and mm. all that stuff. And it's uh, it's good. And uh, the extra interest added is that he sources all of Morris's lyrics if he's ripped them off from, <laughs> as he did, oh. from films, and books, etc., mm. uh, etc. Et so you get to find out where ah, that line in this charming band comes from. Um, you know, obviously, mm. the the film. Um, which I'm struggling to remember now. Sleuth, good Lord, with Laurence Olivier and Michael mm. Caine. Um, a jumped up pantry boy, that's the line that comes from that. Ah. I wish I'd, I wish I'd prepared this bit a bit, a bit that's more. That's all right. But, uh, there you go. Anyway, if you fancy, if you fancy folks, uh, uh, a song by song um, distillation, extraction, or exegesis, or whatever you want to call it, um, Simon Goddard, Songs to Save Your Life. Um, and I'm going through it again. It's interesting that, you know, because, you know, these kind of genius songwriters, lyricists, uh, rip, oh, don't want to say ripping stuff off, but citing things or quoting influenced, things. Dear boy, influence. Influenced by, uh, you know, I know the music of Roddy Frame very well, as you know, and there are many, many, many instances of his music, little, little snatches, uh, I wouldn't say stolen, but it's like, oh, he's referring to... Um, uh, David Bowie's song there, or he's referring to a Beatles song there, or something like that. But it's one of his songs called On the Avenue, um, an Aztec Camera song called On the Avenue. And it's an, an absolute, it's almost a cover version of an Ivor Cutler song. Right. Sounds exactly like it. Uh, but apparently at the right. time he went to Ivor Cutler and said, I've, I've, I've kind I've, of ripped I've off your song here. What do you want to do about it? And Ivor was like, that's oh, fine. You can have it. But he, you know, he fessed up and said, I've really, really paid tribute to your song here. But um, yeah. Yeah, but I yeah, the countless times you listen, and you go, oh yeah, I know where that's come from. Um, but I don't know how that kind of stands legally and st all that stuff. I'm, you know, it depends how, mm. how many records they sell, doesn't it? If, if suddenly suddenly you're Ed Sheeran, uh, yeah. you start getting lawsuits, don't you? But yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, it could have happened with the Smiths. I mean, Panic mm. is basically um, Metal Guru by T Rex. Yeah, you know, well, Oasis yeah. obviously well, famously well, had indeed. a few of those. That too. Uh, they could and steal it, it from, you know, steal it from a long line of people. You yeah. know the original song, and then they did it, and then they copied that yeah. bit and yep. on into the future. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Even, Even Radiohead yeah. fell foul to that, didn't they? With uh, yeah. Creep, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, mm. There we go. <sighs> right. And the other thing, the other thing I've got is basically comments on. Uh, one of the consistently good series worldwide, I think, Taskmaster. Um, is it uh, getting a bit towards the end of its thing? Well, there's always something that's that makes you think, oh no, this is still this is still great. Um, and I refer people in New Zealand to the last task of the previous episode of Taskmaster NZ, which was one of the best things I've ever seen on Taskmaster. See, I, I saw time. your tweet about this and, I th yeah, and I'd yeah. been watching it. I'm like, I don't remember that. Or was it from the previous weeks or something? I was watching Do it. Do you know that there's two Taskmasters a week? No. Continue. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Monday and Tuesday, which uh, I found out a bit late as well. So right. I missed the Fair second enough. one. Right. I had to go back and watch that online. Anyway, right. yeah. so it was the Tuesday one, obviously. Right. Yep. And they finished the episode. And it's a team task, and there's a team of two and a team of three, and they're on the stage, and they have a remote control car and a box of eggs. <laughs> and on the on the front of the stage, leading down to the to the floor where Jeremy is sitting mm. in his chair, the taskmaster, mm. there's a very narrow um, uh, ramp. bridge yeah. ramp to, yeah. to to roll your roll your car down. Yeah. And the task was to write a compliment. You compliment Jeremy by writing it on an egg putting it in the radio control car, running it down the ramp to Jeremy's feet, and then he can pick it up and read it. And you get a point for that. Uh, and it proved to be quite difficult because the ramp was quite narrow and the mm. radio control cars are quite sensitive in their yeah. control, so they would just keep falling off. And, and, the, and then uh, basically the team of three decided to start chucking eggs at the team of two who were winning. Um, <laughs> uh, it was just great because it was genuinely gripping as well as they would get, this, yeah. get the car down the ramp. Um, I'd get the point, um, mm. but uh, still coming up with you know the sort of novel. It's great novel stuff, isn't it, Taskmaster? I think it's on all around the world now, really, isn't it? I think it's, I, it's I been would, franchised I would now. So there'll probably be lots of others. Um, I think Alex Horn um, owns it. I think it's his thing. He must be yeah. making a lot of money from it. 
Yeah. He did actually pop pop in this series in a little He did, yeah, I saw snippet. that one. Yeah. 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 But, um, I, I, the other thing I like about it is as well, it's not always – you kind of think who's the most sorted comedian on the stage uh, mm. and they're going to – they're going to do it, but it doesn't always work. No. You know, if, if if you're the most sort of most regular, sometimes it's the most anarchic one that, yeah. that, that does. Just got anyway, particular you... skills, aptitudes for certain things, yeah. Or, or, or even or even none, and they're just coming at mm. it from a completely different angle that nobody mm. else would think of and and, and win as a result, and yeah. it's great. Uh, the, the, the casts over here, they haven't, they haven't exhausted the comedian yet. We're only on series four, but, yeah. uh, but the cast is pretty strong on this, on this one. Guy Hedwood, the old stager, um, Karen O'Leary, Mel Bracemel, Ray O'Leary, and Sieni Le Olo, aka Baba. Baba, yeah. AKA, aka Tina from Turner. Tina from Turner's. Uh, She's brilliant. She's good fun. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. So if, 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 if you for some reason failed to tune in to, Taskmaster Series Four NZ, then um, then get in there because there's some been some great stuff, mm. um, especially this season. Yes, good stuff. Right, okay, we'll leave it there. We won't keep these good people Fresh any longer. Good, eh? yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for listening in or watching. If you're on YouTube, uh, yeah. we'll see you again soon. Um, say goodbye, yeah. Captain. Say goodbye, Captain. See you later, folks. I'll take one.